We are talking Amateurville, The Awakening, a new 2017 movie written and directed by a gentleman whose name I'm going to butcher, but I'm going to attempt it anyway, uh, Frank Calvhorn. That's definitely how you pronounce it. Anyway, this is a, another entry into the long-running Amateurville series. But let's talk about this series as a whole because there may be something people don't realise about this. Because Amateurville is an actual place, you can't copyright it. So using the name Amateurville it is not kind of going to copy, uh, cause any kind of copyright issues for any independent filmmaker who wants to make any old horror film slap Amateurville something or other. And, you know, they can do that because it's in the public domain. That is why you have had so many Amateurville movies of varying quality, shall we say, uh, you know, since, since the, obviously the original. So um, this movie, I have to say, I went into it with some ugh, some fears that it's just going to be another old haunting movie, the same old thing. I've got to say, I was somewhat pleasantly surprised at this film because it does a couple of neat things. Let's give you the basic premise first of all. We have a family uh, of, of four people. We have a kind of a, a single mum, a teenage daughter, uh, a kind of a teenage boy who is uh, in a coma. Uh, which you'll learn about why throughout the movie and he's basically um uh been in the coma for two years and in essentially a in a vegetative state then we've got the young seven-year-old girl and they go in this house the mother kind of knows the history of the house but she hasn't told the kids they obviously find out it's been 40 years since the original true life murders that took place in the amateurville house and because it's kind of this 40 year gap there's some significance there which was uh you know a little bit um yeah, anyway, but, uh, you know, the, the weird things start to happen. Uh, the guy, the, the young lad who is in this coma, starts to have some signs of life. Could it be a miracle? Could he be coming back from the brink? Or could it be something in the house? Evil, an evil presence that is going into his soul. Well, we have to watch the movie to find out. Anyway, let's talk a bit about this movie. Like I said, this film actually pleasantly surprised me in a couple of different ways. One way, for example, I would say, is the way that it positions itself within the Amateurville series. What this movie does, I feel, is very clever and, and very meta. So it obviously is based on this real thing that's happened. But what they do is they say, oh, there was this bunch of films that were made about this house. And let's, it wouldn't it be fun to watch them in the actual house? So they actually reference the original movie and they, we actually see them watching it. The teenage daughter and the uh, kind of two friends that she's made. They talk about the remake, they talk about Amateurville 2. I thought it was really fun. It's a really fun way to connect this series of films in a way that isn't just another old remake. It's a reboot, I guess you would say. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a very fun way. There's also another kind of like fun reveal, which I won't spoil that happens kind of at the beginning of the third act uh, and that's kind of like from one of the characters and the kind of some motivations. I thought that was, that, I thought that again was quite a neat idea. The interesting thing with this movie is I've got to say the horror is relatively light. There's not actually a lot of kind of supernatural stuff that happens here when it's all said and done and what we do see is kind of on the mild side. So don't be expecting a kind of a particularly scary movie. It really isn't. The, the supernatural stuff is, is pretty minimal. Um, you know, we do see it. Uh, I guess the most um, otherworldly thing is kind of a, uh, a transformation scene. And it, it's a little bit horrible CG, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but there you go. So the downside is is that the, 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 the supernatural stuff relatively is, is actually a minor part and it's very kind of not exactly not exactly subtle but it just there's not much of it essentially uh i thought the acting was all pretty good i've got to say i thought the uh dominic monaghan who plays the uh this 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 guy in a coma despite the fact he barely does anything uh, he's still pretty uh, freaky, I've got to say, when he's kind of lo looking around with his eyes. You may recognise him from uh, the TV show Gotham, where he plays Jerome, which is, could or could not be the Joker. Uh, you've got Bella Thorne, who plays the kind of the teenage daughter, who is our kind of uh, central character. And of course, you've got Jennifer Jason Lee as well, probably the most well-known name here. Uh, obviously, in the cast as well. So there's some there's some pretty good acting here, I've got to say. Um, you know. I would say this movie does kind of fall into some kind of it does go to some cliches and kind of typical horror tropes and things like that you know we have the kind of the edgy outsider girl blah 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 we know that because she's wearing black lipsticks yada yada um 
but I still think it has enough going for it to make it an interesting, if not scary, uh, haunted house film uh, with kind of some neat original twists that I thought were quite good. And I feel this, you know, if you look at the Am Amateurville series as a whole, this is probably one of the better efforts. I wouldn't say it's obviously, you know, the best in the series, maybe, but I haven't seen all of them, if I'm completely honest, but I'm sure, uh, you know, that there are some, some ones that are all right, be it the original or one of the sequels. Uh, but nonetheless, I feel it's okay. So it's an okay haunted house movie. It's probably worth your time if you like a kind of a, a kind of haunted house movie without being being particularly bombarded with jump scares or kind of gore or anything like that. Because it really isn't there, to be honest. But if you do want that, then you kind of may feel this movie is somewhat lacking in that department. Overall, I thought it was a fun story. It had some clever ideas, and I thought the acting was all fine. And, uh, you know, it was it, it kept my interest, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10, despite the fact that it wasn't a flashy movie in any way, shape or form. 6 out of 10, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.